Okay. <laughs> yeah, hello, Misha. So we can maybe continue today as we discuss, like, kind of, I have actually a few questions I hope to clarify your position on, like, what you think about. Uh, one of the questions, actually, I asked uh, in the previous uh, part, in the first part, was that, uh, like, I asked you if, if CP60 would be enough to get cancer disappear. And, uh, like, you talked later about 70, uh, was it? Oh, no, it was on the forum you mentioned. But the, what you mentioned, that it's actually we need some mental resilience. And I thought, like, later, what did you mean by uh, mental resilience? Because well, my question was actually that if student continues to keep CP60, is it possible that cancer, like, re reappear or would start to grow? Because in my view, like, it's kind of very unlikely that, like, it's, Usually, uh, if people, if students, students or clients cannot progress to up there, and th that's a, a common case, like because this is what the Buteka doctor discovered. So, would CP60 yeah. would be enough? What do you think? Kind of in a simple um, words. I think that it's still valid what Professor Dr. Buteka said about CP60, um, because. What I experienced in my cases where, where I work with the people that have uh, um, aggressive brain tumors, that's my profession, basically. That's my uh, spe specialty, working with brain tumors um, right now. Uh, and what I experience is that when people um, reach 70 in the morning control pause, mm -hmm. measure it in the same time, and when you can see the progression going from like 10 or 15, which is normal. People start with 10, with mm -hmm, yeah. 12, 15, um, with cancer. And then, we, and I can see they, they pass through all the plateaus, which is very crucial that they pass through plateaus. And we know why plateaus are there. And um, they, they get some nudging and understanding of basically physiology and why they're doing this. And we pass through all those stages and then we land on 60 and then past 60, maybe go to 70, um, which is basically my new, I established myself this new level of 70 that I want because we want, we work with very aggressive tumors and um, I cannot be, uh, cannot be happy be before they mm -hmm. are at 70 basically. Mm -hmm. And now I know that I can do it. We, we've done it now last seven months with our new, um, with our new pros, uh, uh, program, we have several people. We have uh, uh, three people that reached uh, over 70 now mm -hmm. in six months. Um, Later, with, it was confirmed yeah. by medical studies as usual, uh, by medical examination that tumors indeed disappeared at around. Yeah, they, don't know, they, didn't, they did not disappear yet, but we reversed it in six months. Oh. Um, we we reversed the we basically made them uh, slow uh, uh, grow slower first and then we made them diminish. So basically, we cannot say that we we reversed reverse meaning that the uh, uh, the process is going another way. So from proliferation of cancer, we turn it over another uh, in <clears throat> another direction. Basically, that's what I mean by reverse. Right? Stop and reverse, and then. We hope, yeah, we hope that I, I think it's only a matter of time to make them disappear. That's what we did. That's what our results are the last seven months. Um, uh, 60, I think it's enough. Yes, because what I see basically when people cross 60, um, the very, not, it's only one metabolic markers, marker. It's a very important metabolic marker very important but we have some other metabolic markers as for example um, lipid panel we have many things in the lipid panel we have total uh, lipoprotein cholesterol total lipoprotein we have high density we have low density we have intermediate density we have very low density lipoprotein we have triglycerides we have a ratio of triglycerides to hdl high density all of them we see normalize in this six months. And this is great. What we also see normalize, we see normalize all the, we have four main inflammation markers like homocysteine, ferritin, uric acid, C-reactive protein, all of them normalize. And I use colors 
to make it very easily accessible for people to understand what is happening. So my, in my graphs, colors are changing automatically. So basically when people reach healing, the, um, um, they see green all over, all, over the, all, all over the line. Not always all over the line. Sometimes we have like some very fast reactors on like acute inflammation. Sometimes, you know, it's like C-reactive protein is still not perfect. It's fluctuating and it depends very much. Well, there's several things depending on. Um, and then glucose is great. The glucose is like uh, 4.5. Millimoles. Yeah, milli uh, yeah, well, it's milligram per deciliter, isn't it? 4.5. Um, it's normally 5.5, 5, 5 6, and then it goes down, and it's stable around between 4 and 4.5. This is great. And then the ketones, we see the levels of basically what we measure, because we measure every day. We don't need, um, uh, we don't, leak, uh, not, don't need long-term this glucose, you know, H1, um, um, HB1C, A1C, we don't, HBA1C, we don't need it actually um, because we, we have real change of glucose. We track every single day um, and we see that it's changing. All of those things, they correlate beautifully to each other. So yes, I think that people are healing when they reach to 60. Mm -hmm. I think so, absolutely, it's valid what uh, Professor Buteko established, I think already for 60 years ago, something like that, I don't know. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's about that, yeah. Uh, yeah. One, one related question actually would be here then uh, is following, this is like what I've already thought for a while <laughs> about, like uh, what happens like uh, with my understanding of cancer, like and because uh, of like what we knew from Buteyko is that stage one is reversible, but stage three and four was not. So that was known like among Soviet Russian Buteyko doctors and now, uh, what happens with application of this diet, which is like uh, zero carb or carnivore or PTD diet, and with all these modifications that you made, like intermittent fasting and so on. So what happens that, uh, like from my viewpoint, it looks like uh, this diet is actually uh, occurred to be an extremely powerful factor in briefing retraining. And why it is so? Because in the past, like, it, it, let's say, uh, if the Buteyko method alone with uh, past diets that, like, which was used in Soviet Union in Russia uh, were applied on groups of people and some, they had even a, a clinical trial. So what happened that uh, those who were uh, too sick or very sick or combined like cancer with diabetes or stage 3, 4, we just could not get even up to uh, uh, above 20 seconds CP. So we would stay at very low level. Now, and this was done uh, with uh, uh, these students or patients trying very, like, really, like, even in studies, you can read that we would do three hours of breath work, you know, uh, exercise could be in many people who could do it up to three, four hours a day. So it's huge amount of investment, of time investment in trying to overcome cancer. And still, we could not uh, deal with three and four. Even all this, like using this very heavy battery of like physical exercise and um, uh, breath work together. Now, uh, we, when diet al alone comes, and we are talking again PKD or carnivore or zero carb diet, like animal uh, products only. So it, it happens to be that this factor allows uh, all these people to break for 20 seconds to go to the zone where. Uh, all these positive effects of other factors like physical exercise and briefing exercises become, uh, of course, it, it would help them to get to 20 as well. But the diet, in my view, like this is how, how from briefing to training viewpoint only, if, if we look at it, diet uh, happened to be, uh, for this particular group of people, for this like after immune conditions, happened to be, is, uh, to be a more significant factor than uh, breath work and exercise combined together. And that's like totally kind of mind-boggling like conclusion to get because uh, all paradigm Buteyko of course uh, I, I like thought myself recently like would he even uh, promote or tell to others if he would discover that because like his life was I can could imagine like from everything what I read was very very tough you know we tried to put yeah. him in mental asylum and like we 
like hardly did not succeed look to be like maybe friend help to be because he was talking about like a, I can cure any disease with breath alone and people would ask well what else you need well he would say you need to run barefoot you know <laughs> on snow <laughs> and then well if somebody would ask well what do you need to eat and he would take a would study this diet to this like deep deep degree he would tell probably well you need to eat meat yeah. and then better raw like they would definitely would not let him go from any, any asylum so even he would stumble on this uh, idea it like just would be too much for him to go against the whole medical establishment yeah. so but uh, like uh, what do you think uh, like my viewpoint would be that Actually, diet can be considered because that's the only thing that allows these patients with stage three and four to get up to 56 if we take a norm. And without diet, they cannot do it. And that means the diet, like it's hugely uh, influential factor in the process of breathing preparing. What, uh, mm. what are your takes on this? You, can, you, you see, I actually, uh, I cannot, um, uh, I, do, I do not know that for sure, but I have an idea that yes, you're right. Because um, when I asked, when I started working with cancer, right from the start, I started ketogenic, using ketogenic and buteco together. So I never did it with, uh, I never worked with cancer with high carb, never tried. Only the, the only thing I know that I know that uh, ketogenic plus buteco works, plus mm -hmm. mental training, plus, uh, you know, connect, we, we're connecting the different things together, you know. Uh, like um, also uh, we work with physical exercise, which is also from the Cheka world. We know a lot about this, right? So yes, uh, and then I brought ketogenic a little bit further to, to, um, uh, to essential ketogenic. That's what I call it now. And essential means that we only eating, that we only have essential micronutrients, essential macronutrients. So we avoid all the triggers of, chronic inflammation that are coming from the plant world. And I see that it's working. I mean, I'm a practical guy, you see. Um, well, I started now writing uh, scientific articles uh, in the medical journals. It's very, very new. Um, my first one is published in Dece December last year and the new, new one will, uh, co will come in October. The first one was about connecting um, in Elsevier, and it was about breathing and nutrition, actually, and about um, hermetic effects, light stress on the cell that trigger um, basically re-establishing of a normality in many cellular processes, processes, which is a recuperation, basically cell recuperation because of light stress of that. And that there's a lot of very interesting aspects that are uh, triggering triggering um, synergetic effects of healing from combining relax, uh, I mean breathing optimization and optimization of nutrition and the new article will be about will be will add physical movement to that duo of breathing and nutrition and we will look at, at the um, the light of uh, moderate movement okay so um, um, I think, yes, I think that uh, stage three and four, and that's what I'm working with. I have only uh, uh, clients with uh, stage three and four, uh, aggressive tumors, brain tumors. And what I see is um, it is possible, absolutely. So, but the, the major thing is here is um, basically uh, a mental part. Uh, and mental part is an interesting thing because it contains both uh, understanding and perception of the environment, which is kind of a mental thing, right? We, um, are we able to look at the environment, to learn from the environment, to understand uh, the connections, um, um, to, to connect the dots and to have a calm and strength not to be in in the fight and flight response all the time in chronic stress. Because if we are in chronic stress all the time, we will not be able to not fall off the wagon because people are falling off the wagon if they are not powerful enough. So how to make people powerful? That's the main question. Because you mean you know, hard, 
hard in long term. You have to maintain. Like let's yeah, say, you have to maintain this. because I can well. only help people. <laughs> I can only help people if we can actually start a strong process and not allow them to fall off the wagon. And how do we do that? That's the thing. You see, the process is the most interesting part of it because the first thing that we know, and we are very happy that we have this technique that Dr. Buteyko, Professor Buteyko, he basically invented this way of looking at breathing in connection with the whole body chemistry, the whole metabolism of the body. This is fantastic. It, is, it was a novel approach. I'm very sorry to say it's still a novel approach. Mm-hmm. It's a pity. It's a pity. It existed for six. Oh, yeah, of course. Like <laughs> you, my my PhD is in math and physics. You have like engineering background, and now we are discussing things which are like it, like if you think the whole like background what we are doing right now like looks like totally ridiculous from some yeah. viewpoint. Now yeah. uh, that's no. Yeah, I completely agree with this. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. I well, I wanted to ask kind of another question which is very practical actually too because it's not relates like directly to cancer but relates to like millions, probably billions of people and the diet that we have. And the question I have is following, like, well, um, uh, imagine the situation and I had like such people, like I met quite many, I want to talk about vegan diet, you know, vegetarian and even raw diets, because there are like, of course, you, you know yourself, we are probably even now by numbers of people and by followers, we're probably still more popular, but definitely low carb and uh, like keto world and car- like all these diets, we, we are growing very, very fast. I would ex- like see like last yes, year. I think so, yeah. Definitely. But what, what my question is following, like that's very hypothetical. I want like kind of you to, uh, to like kind of, to see what we, what we would say. Imagine a person who is like uh, uh, eating a raw vegan diet, okay? Raw vegan is very tough. And in my experience, I met uh, just probably a few people, maybe several people who were actually doing really well on this diet, okay? I met many, many more people, probably, I don't know, five, seven, maybe 10 times more people who tried that and could not because raw vegan, that means you need to chew a lot, you know, like it's, it's very tough. Now imagine this following situation because it's also relates kind of to my experience. If this person on raw vegan diet and if, if he or she is doing well, he would have no soiling and that means there is no, like looks like, I, I'll ask you maybe later, intestinal permeability. Now, uh, would you suggest that this person actually just can continue to eat this diet because it looks like you see if there is no intestinal permeability after immunity would not be a problem in future like this uh, would be pro- would would he like uh, it, would you advise to have a low carb diet or other diets what? okay okay it's a very good question you see i look at uh, veganism um as an advanced form of well um of um not malnutrition but uh basically chronic fasting. So you, it's an advanced form of fasting in a way, because you are, it's a, um, from the start, you can have some, some good effects, like fasting, basically. Um, and that's what many people experience when they, uh, when they embark on the vegan journey uh, from eating SAD diet, which is a standard American diet, they start uh, vegan and they are, oh, uh, they are confirmed in the first weeks and months. They confirm this, everything, this is much better. And basically everything, well, almost everything is better than a standard American diet because you create a perfect storm for your body. That's what it is about. It's very tasty. It's very palatable. And that's why, um, well, it's not... Um, um, it's, um, um, well, people are working, professionals are working on palatability of the foods. So it's a whole science. So it's very, very hard uh, to stop eating that way. And you know, there's a lot of uh, factors in it also, sugars and um, a lot of uh, refined grains, refined carbohydrates, they're very palatable. And uh, there's a whole industry that is working on making them more and more palatable and more and, and more that people uh, cannot basically refrain from, I mean, eating them. So that's one part of, of the picture. Um, another part of the picture is that 
it sounds very green. It sounds that uh, pe people are um, saving the planet. Uh, when in, in reality, it's quite uh, contrary. It's quite contrary. Because when we start working, uh, thinking about ethical aspects of veganism and vegetarianism, we start slowly, slowly understand that uh, the premises of, uh, um, <clears throat> of this um, uh, um, ethical side of vegetarianism and veganism, they are totally flawed. It totally flowed. And on Sakharov.com, we just made available a database that um, with about 300 questions that are answering uh, the, uh, answering the, well, questions, yeah. Articles, video articles, small, two, three minutes long that are answering all the questions about the difference between veganism and carnivore, eating meat or eating solely meat or a blending. There's a lot of aspects that are clarified there. So I will not go into details. And people want to go there, they just go to Sakharov.com and go to Knowledge Base. And in the Knowledge Base, it's a free database. A part of it is free, a part of it is closed for our intensive courses with the footages of Q and A's with people that are on courses, but all the other things are free. So they can actually learn a lot there. So what I wanna say is no, I would not advise these people to keep on following this route. Why? Because, as I said, there's no nutrition. There's so you, no, there's, you, it's not nutrition, it's starvation. Okay, but there are known people who like, I don't know if you have heard about, for example, Norman Walker, who was a father of the natural hygienist movement in the United States and mm -hmm. kind of who, uh, he lived long time ago, but his documented life uh, span was something around 112 years or 107 wow. years. Wow! Fantastic. And and he was he wrote several like very small books. I read probably four, uh, four maybe all of them even because they were really small, like fruit and diet suggestion about. He was advocate of fasting, but he was like he promoting this raw vegan lifestyle sprouts. But of course, no, no sugar, no, no starches even because yeah, yeah, yeah. like a kind of. Uh, but my, my my kind of uh, take probably would be a bit different because I, I'm not sure, like ethical kind of a different question. I'm, I'm purely concerned with uh, like health or medical related viewpoint, like with yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two conditions. But my understanding is actually when people do not have intestinal permeability and uh, in my like practical viewpoint would be no soiling. And, and I knew such students too, that, we, and we get, of course, we get good enough um, uh, breath uh, so that we have like good enough state of the immune system so that we gut does not get polluted, does not get, get worse. These people actually, in my view, are able to stay for probably like indefinitely and have very lo long life uh, just from viewpoint, again, from medicine, like without... Uh, from well, health. it depends. It depends on many factors. It depends on their DNA, basically, mm -hmm. on their genetic setup, because we have different genetic setup. But there's some um, aspect that I want to um, stress, not stress, stress is not a good word here. Just, I want to mention some aspects here. The first aspect is that it depends very much what, when they are doing this, what, what time, uh, what, uh, <clears throat> what period in their life. Are they re uh, reproductive or post-reproductive? Because health is actually, all our um, health switches are working in a different way, uh, the pathways. Um, <clears throat> biochemical pathways are working uh, pretty different in uh, reproductive and post-reproductive period. So when they are doing it in reproductive period, there's something I, I told you probably about that before. We have some natural health and uh, we can endure. We can basically they thrive. We don't have natural health after 35, 40, for some people 45. We need to do something special. And uh, this is a process of like, degeneration on the cellular level, which uh, proliferates throughout the body and speeds up uh, with different rates, different people. Again, this is a, a genetical factor. Um, another, th yeah, so yes, absolutely. There's some people that could live long, uh, it depends on their genetic setup. It also depends on, um, well, um, 
well, some other factors, how they combine different nutrients, things like that. But um, um, basically what I want to say is that um, very often I would expect that the most of the, the cases, I would expect that people that don't have intestinal permeability um, on this raw vegan diet in, these, in, in their reproductive age will get it in the post-reproductive age because of the fiber, very high levels of fiber they are eating. And fiber is basically will, uh, will promote intestinal permeability. So that's what I, I really think. And there are also other factors, the lack of B12 and uh, you know some other vitamins that you cannot get um, in a bioavailable way from eating uh, plant matter only if you don't have animal matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it actually brings kind of another idea which I thought of already some weeks or months ago, like kind of how to combine all these ideas with uh, very, no very known facts that let's say 100 years ago, the profile of diseases were very different, like what were uh, main causes of mortality. Now it's known like, of course, we have like uh, four main conditions, which would be respiratory asthma, COPD would be the last one, but the first three would be heart disease, uh, diabetes related conditions and uh, cancer related oncological problems. So, and now hundred years ago, uh, people died from di very different causes. And that raises the question like, because we ate a lot of uh, plant stuff, not only hundred, but even thousand years uh, and uh, for a long, long time ago, we can like look and the question rises like, you see, it's not like, uh, like I was thinking from what Boteca discovered first and he told, oh, that's actually, it's true. If we look at breath, we can see that we breathed somewhere around two, three times less air and meaning that we had much more oxygen immune system. Permeability was actually at this level, according to Soviet Russian Boteca doctors, what actually would be normal just because of CP is high enough. That means even there is a damage from uh, uh, fiber, as you mentioned, or from plants this damage would be uh, relatively quickly repaired because of still good breath characteristic. Now what we have now, we do not have breath. We lost it like during the last hundred years, like I have this historical graph on the homepage of normal breathing where people can see how breath uh, deteriorated dramatically during the last hundred years. And that was combined with diet, which actually like the diet kind of fiber makes uh, an additional factor which uh, created all this explosion of autoimmune conditions in mankind. Yeah, yeah. So would you agree like that it's probably kind of actually a combination of two factors, not just <laughs> diet alone, but also... Absolutely, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm telling people, you know, I'm telling people, you know, I'm now working with a very big group. There's six, 16,000 Russian-speaking people in the group called Ketogenic Diet. That's the biggest uh, group on, on social media about ketogenic diet in Russian. And there's 95% women there, 94, 95% women. And so I started um, a course now for two weeks ago now. Um, we have 350 people there on the course. Um, and um, I, w I walked, uh, worked some months or something like that by giving them a lot of information, free webinars and explaining a lot of things uh, that we need to connect the dots that ketogenic, if they want to, because a lot of the things that they are like, well, side effects or uh, um, adaptation phase effects or, you know, uh, cleansing, cleansing effects uh, uh, or reactions, they are also connected with other factors like breathing that we cannot live without. If you, I mean, if you restrain, if you, if you close for the breathing, you cannot live for, I mean, more than 40 seconds. I mean, after 40 seconds, most people will collapse, collapse, I guess, 40, 50 seconds. But without eating, they can live for months. I mean, I told them that those things. So I actually kind of tried to educate them. We need to connect the dots. And then people are now basically connecting the dots and very active and they now understand. And the first five weeks on this course, I'm not talking about nutrition at all. It's a shock. They don't know all of them. They did not get it yet. But now the two weeks passed and I did not mention anything about the diet because I just want to make a kind of 
reverse their world. So they kind of learn uh, by uh, not talking about the diet anymore because that's what only one thing that they used to talk about. They used to look at their symptoms and talk about the diet. Look at the symptoms, talk about the diet. Now they have several points that they can connect and experience a difference. Now, most of those people already in two weeks, they experienced, they start experiencing the difference. And this is, I think it's a victory somehow, because when you shift the focus and people are kind of, you shock the people maybe first, but then they are learning very fast. They are learning very fast. Mm -hmm. So it's another way of working. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's not little group. I have to use some other uh, teaching methods, other um, methods of giving people feedback. It's very much group learning right now. Not so much an individual, but I'm still answering individual questions. We have a Q and A's twice a week, one hour, one and a half hour. Today we had a Q and A. We had a uh, over 30 questions that I used one and a half hour to answer. Last q and Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, it was 42 questions. So there's a lot of things there. People are learning from each other, very different process, but they still uh, teach them how to measure control pass, how we can use different aspects of Buteyko, how we can um, implement it, uh, make it a part of their everyday life because many people are working and they, they are not severely injured or they are not like, they don't have any deadly diseases, most of them. So we need to make them learn and make them train, make them use those techniques on an easy way somehow in their life, not let them fall off the wagon. How do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, another thing uh, kind of related to diets as well, of course, would be, I wanted to ask the following, like uh, intestinal permeability, is like so many people say that it's kind of extremely common and some even say that nearly everybody has it. Uh, my question would be, is it possible to then say that kind of the mechanism is uh, extremely slow to develop? And that means like when people have already intestinal permeability and uh, like we know CP like 15, 20, 25 uh, provides all conditions for too slow repair of the gut. So yes. there is like tight yes. junction. And what people basically do with especially like modern kind of this obsession to have like raw foods, to have a lot of variety, to eat all year yeah. round uh, fresh food, uh, that just creates like uh, every day people like pour inside the bloodstream the cocktail of thousands of uh, chemicals which should not be present in blood in the first place. So we do it year after year and if that's eventually actually kind of, it's like so much stress for all these like yeah. different compartments of yeah. the immune system. Yeah. So we need to, yeah, we need to disrupt it basically somehow. We need to disrupt this uh, downfall or downstream development um, because all of those aspects, like for example, lots of stress, um, high levels of lung ventilation, minute ventilation, um, not understanding what um, moderate movement is. Because many of those people, they just want to show the world around them that they are very strong athletes and they reach the results. All of those things uh, together with uh, abnormal eating patterns, they are overeating. They are eating too many times during the day. They are overloading the gut. They are overloading uh, uh, kua or via their intestinal wall. They're overloading basically the, um, the lymph and the blood with toxins. All of those things, they create a vicious circle of, uh, well, downfall. It's a downfall. So if we cannot disrupt this, all of those things together, and I believe that we have to approach different aspects at the same time, maybe consecutively with small steps, but we need to approach all of them. We need to address all of them, okay? If we, do, we don't do this, I don't think we can create um, a very strong uh, change. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah, I don't think so, I don't think so. So that's my take on this, and I, I believe very much in, uh, uh, it's not belief, it's knowledge. I know about Buteyko that it's wor it works. Mm -hmm. It's not a belief, it's much stronger. It's knowledge. 
you started i started learning from you your site was the was the the, the well altukhov um, sergey altukhov in russia and you with your um a, a normal breathing site and then i bought your big book and then I, when I started reading this big book, it was a, a game changer for me. Then I really understood that. Okay. And I knew about Buteyko before, also from Russia. I, did, I just did not really go, go into a deep understanding of this. So uh, we need to learn. We need to take time to read, to understand, to learn. So basically, I want to mimic the same process that I went through, through your knowledge site. You're, you have basically a knowledge base. Normal breathing is a knowledge base. You can have a lot of different information and very different connections on the, on the normal breathing. And that's what I went through to understand uh, many of those things. And uh, that's what I want my clients to go through. And I don't think there's another way. Not if you ask me. I don't think there's <laughs> okay. another way. Okay, I have another kind of another small practical question too. Like uh, intestinal permeability is a thing which is um, quite difficult to measure. You know, like there's I think they go like yeah. at least yeah. probably hundred something and quite sophisticated tests and so on. Uh, not like regular tests, of course, for family doctors. Uh, would soiling be a, a, a accurate enough representation? Because yeah. Kind yeah. Of Absolutely. Look, this is a good question because I'm not measuring intestinal permeability directly mm -hmm. with like uh, giving, uh, making the body uh, get some uh, different uh, measure, different measures of molecules in the bloodstream, in the stream and see what happens uh, um, uh, like measuring input output, right? Um, I, we don't do this. We don't do this. Why? Because we have complementary techniques that are connecting together, which is basically an effect of high CPs, which is no soiling. Mm -hmm. No soiling. That's one thing. Another thing, we, um, we have a measurement of uh, perceived energy through the day that is measured every evening. And we measure it from zero. Zero is, is a dead person. Uh, 0 0.5, let's say, to five. And we go like 5, 4.5, 4, 3.5, 3, 2.5, 2, and so on. And the system change colors according to the green is 4.54. 4. So we actually can see how the perceived energy levels are changing through the day. And uh, with healing and uh, normal elimination, we call it normal elimination because people stop uh, having diarrhea, people stop um, having, I mean, full stop in the movement in the, of the gut, of the gut, and um, constipation. All of those things, when they connect together, we see the difference. We get green energy, which is 4.5 or 5 out of 5. Okay, we get high CP, we get low blood glucose, we have normalization of all the whole lipid panel which is seven measurements. We have normalization of, a, of the, which we chose four uh, measurements of, four, uh, of chronic inflammation. All of them normalize together. We don't need to measure permeability because the symptoms disappear. The symptoms disappear. We don't need to measure it anymore. And the only thing that I, I, I care about is to, that people after six months, they really understand they'd have to maintain this. Yeah, that's the hardest part, I, I bet. <laughs> Would no, be. it's not <laughs> the hardest part because if you maintain people, if you see people every day, and that's what I do from Monday to Friday, I see them every day. And I have a very, very uh, high compliance mm -hmm. because we look at each other's measurement online and they know it. And I pick people out and say, okay, let's look at your, it's okay. Sometimes they say, no, it's not okay because I just, send or no, not send but i just had two days of something and i say it's okay we'll look tomorrow but there's a so much bulk of data that when people succeeded to have a bulk of data for one month every day they will not stop because what they're experiencing they look graphic interpretations on graphs of their healing process and for them people are with uh, serious diseases 
uh, it's so valuable. They don't quit. They don't quit. No, what, what I mean is hard, hard to maintain later for months, years. That's no, but yeah, but yet, <laughs> I have, a, I have a, like a, the, this system I start measuring, measured for five years ago. Mm. Now I have a one client with leukemia that I have measurement for five years, Arthur, mm. for five years, every day's measurement. And it's a very big bulk of data. It's, it's like, uh, you see, it's um, like 1300 lines of measurement. First year, lots of measurements, around 40 measurements. Other years, it's about 10 measurements. He still makes Frolov, for example, once a day in the morning. Every day, every day. Because he knows it's a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. He reversed leukemia yeah. without chemo and radiation. You know, and he's a father, he's a 58, and he's a father of three, four children, and he has energetically best time of his life. His weight is like it was in, uh, he was 20, 20 years old. Everything is working, like for five years, for first time in his life, because he was obese and he had cancer. Now he's not obese, he's normal weight, it's like 25 kilos less, mm -hmm. and he has no cancer. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's no. And you have four children, and you love life. <laughs> yeah, uh, my other question would be like, we know students who are sick, who are very sick, and this was already known, like by, by Bottega doctors for decades that these uh, people actually practice quite well. And I, I, at the same time, <laughs> when I started, for example, like about what, 17, 18 years ago, um, uh, I had actually very, very few people who were severely sick, very few, like most, mo most groups would be none, none at all. And that's of course a totally different game because it is uh, actually a big, big challenge to uh, teach the method in a way so that we can actually get up to the Bottega norm. And so my question would be, I know that now uh, you teach uh, the whole family and the question would be, okay, students, we do learn, they experience great health, but what about family mem members? Do yeah, you have many yeah. family I give, members? Uh, yeah, who get, I give, uh, get, in all of my courses, both in Russian, which is nor, not as intensive, though I'm, trying, I'm, I'm uh, giving them attention almost every day, and in intensive courses with glioblastoma and other uh, brain tumors, aggressive brain tumors, three and grade three and, three and four, we always have families together. And I always have free, uh, it's always for, for free. You, I, you, I can uh, take family members for free. Uh, I can say out of, uh, we have three families now where the family members are not only are together on the Q&As because that's almost all are present on the Q&As together with the uh, ill health people in their families. But we have three families where um, um, they asked about the measure, measurement tables and they are filling them. So basically we're checking also uh, three, oh, four, four people that are not sick mm -hmm. uh, in the intensive courses. And, and, in, the, um, and in the Russian, not, not so intensive courses, uh, we have, um, um, half of people are not paying family members. So I gave them the possibility. I'm not sure that they are, many of them are in the, in the core of the most active people on this course. I don't think so. But, but, they have this possibility. They have, they have a chance. Mm -hmm. I just want to give people a chance. And I agree. I agree. And I also tell, tell, tell to people that, look, you cannot, I mean, you cannot change other people. You can only change yourself. So don't use your energy trying to convert or explain. If people are ready, they would ask and they would uh, try to, um, you know, like uh, make you slip some information, they will ask uh, intensively, will be inquisitive. If people are not inquisitive, you can, don't, don't try to, um, try to change them. It will not, it's, I, I don't think it's possible. I think it's only possible for people to change when they're ready. And very often, um, well, it's very, uh, it's sad, but very often people are ready where it's really uh, late, not like, too late, but pretty late. Well, that's how we are. 
not everybody, not everybody. Some people are aware, and you know, before I used I used to work with Alzheimer's. It's uh, it's heavier. It's much harder with Alzheimer's, because people think that it's okay. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no yeah. physical there's no physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you mentioned and, it last time. And when there are physical symptoms, it's it's too late. It's absolutely too late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, another kind of maybe part we can discuss, uh, maybe you can share your experiences because you yourself had quite interesting journey. I remember when I, it was like five years ago when I was in Denmark myself and we had like two groups of students. And, but uh, what was it, kind of I realized myself very recently, uh, like reflecting on my, my kitchen as well, I kind of realized that actually I had so many students who get uh, fast, really good results, like getting morning CP60, you know, four hours of sleep, like, and so on. <laughs> but what happens with kind of my kind of uh, uh, perception of viewpoint, that my focus has been always on those who, like, of course, lagging behind, <laughs> because those who are doing well, you know, you kind of even don't uh, pay attention to them, and they uh -huh. disappear really fast, which I realized actually from my side was quite a big mistake, because if I keep them around and, like, uh, I go away, I travel to another country, and, like, uh, contact, I don't know, email disappeared, like, from my email box and so on, like, you just lose touch with those people, which I realized quite a big uh, kind of drawback, because these are, like, highly inspiring stories they could share and uh, yeah. even provide like practical information although we have a lot of uh, other who whom I, like whom, who, whom I follow but my question would be like in your case I, I actually because of you progress so fast I have really awake, uh, awake experience because there are like more than 10 other people and all of them who of course much slower in terms of progress uh, progress in comparison with you and because of that actually your case is completely kind of uh, get erased from my memory because I remember like uh, I bet much better remember stories of several other people who were kind of uh, really kind of struggling you know with uh, breath progress and so uh, like you were kind of one uh, common thing I, I remember with uh, when we started that your um, CP measurements even was kind of little over exaggerated. <laughs> that was kind of a thing which kind of pop up in my mind. But later when you started to measure it correctly, it was something around 25, 30 seconds you had with probably at the beginning, yes? Because mm -hmm. your journey was really remarkably fast later. What do you think? Yeah, was, well... Um, if, you, if you remember when you... I remember, I was struggling, yeah, I remember. No, um, you're fast. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, uh, um, well... What, what was it? It's, it's a hard, uh, you see, I, I also overtrain. That's what a very big problem for me. I overtrain. I had a very strong overtraining effect um, with problems with my heart afterwards and uh, things like that. So, uh, because it, of breathing exercises only. No, no, no. Uh, it was breathing exercises only with very hard, uh, very heavy power, very heavy levels of air hunger and, uh, with lots of physical trainer training, which I understood. So you mean your resting pulse gets too high? Or, or too, chronic? too, low. too low. Too low, chronically? Yeah, yeah chronically. I, um, I exaggerated. You see, my resting pulse was 29. Well, uh, I had I had friends actually, like, but yeah. we, we, this were professional athletes, like long yeah. ago. Yeah. So twenty seven, twenty nine, it was uh, very healthy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Look, it's not healthy. I don't think it's healthy, basically. Well, it can be uh, for it sure. It can be, maybe, maybe. I don't know. But what happened is that I had pulse twenty nine, and I had, uh, you know, um, the um, the pulse fall about fifty five beats in, in one minute, which was very, very good. And I thought it was the healthiest thing ever. And then I understood that something is wrong. Um, and that was a very hard way. I found out that uh, I, I was overtraining and um, I, had to, um, I had to basically combine, um, um, like for example, training like um, slow, very slow jogging, for example. Th that happened before the course which we had in Denmark? No, yeah. no, no, it, it happens afterwards. It afterwards, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. so it was um, an overtraining effect and I learned a lot from working with um, 
reading Professor Phil Maffetone. He has a method called Math, M-A-F. And I learned a lot about not going over 85% of your aerobic threshold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it helped, it saved me actually. That's why I am promoting the concept of moderate movement. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most crucial things. Mm -hmm. So, and people have a very hard time understanding it. And the younger the people, the harder the time they have understanding what moderate movement is because they want to prove something. Most of them, they want to prove something. They want to take risks, yeah, that's what young do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why um, most of the people that I work with, they're in the post-reproductive age, only few in the reproductive age. So most people are, are over 35. When they already learned something, People are 20, 25, you cannot really teach them. I tried to make, you know, um, to work with young people. It's, it's, it's hard because they want to make, re they want results. <laughs> they want results. And this is a fallacy. And I really believe that it's a fallacy. And the faster we understand that we need moderation. That's what I learned from Buteco also. Moderation in breathing. Moderation in movement. Not too low movement, not, not too fast not too much movement. Moderation in thinking, very, quite, quite, quite uh, crucial. Um, then, um, moderation in eating, very crucial. And then, moderation in your autoimmunity, which is uh, moderating an autoimmune response. We don't need to trigger autoimmunity, right? And that's a moderation also. And then also moderation in process. We make actually a paradigm shift. We go through a paradigm shift from a target oriented way of working to process oriented way of working. It's also moderation a lot. You need to learn uh, uh, slowness of process. So basically what we are doing, it's about moderation. Um, and it's not easy to say to the people that are chronically stressed that they have to take it easy. I'm doing it every day. I'm doing Facebook Lives for the people. I'm making videos about that. I'm answering the question. Basically, most of the questions, I'm working with uh, like 350 people now on this course, and 95% of them are women. And most of the questions are arising only because they cannot wait. They don't understand that we have 12 months. We have a 12 month course, and uh, we have a lot of time. And I want them really to embark on a very slow process, slow learning. I really believe that slow learning is a deep learning. And they can, many of them cannot really learn to accept this fast enough. <laughs> so, okay. that's the thing. Yeah, you kind of here, one phrase actually caught my attention again. You mentioned, uh, uh, people have ten, like tendency or like problem with moving too much like uh, <laughs> I mean yeah, usually like moving what, too much yeah, yeah. over uh, over over training over training you mean physical like doing too much physical exercise absolutely uh, yeah because you see well, um, can can you give me an example like what, what oh, absolutely. Too much? because that's a kind of a, a new idea for me <laughs> absolutely no it's not a new idea not for me at all at least um, 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 what I mean in the real world, Misha, when uh, I have regular students, uh, I have like students now, uh, students would commonly exercise like let's say 30, 60 minutes a day. So like <laughs> that's extremely common. No, 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 look, 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 it's not that, it's not that. You see, I just mentioned um, the paradigm, a new paradigm of going through or paradigm shift going through um, off the this idea that is leading idea of uh, um, of uh, um, target oriented way of learning or target target oriented or oriented way to process oriented and for me you see it's uh, it's very palpable it's very physical I can explain what people are normally um, measuring they're measuring the results. There's not just making a measurement. They're measuring the results and they get the results. And what is that? It's on time, on distance, on speed, 
on intensity, a number of repetitions. That's those five things. And I want them to stop that. I want them to measure only on one thing, on depth. That's only one thing. What is the depth? It's a depth of relaxation in movement, nothing else. I will discard the results that are made by control. Why? Because I really, I think I got what Professor Buteko really meant. When he said about breathing retraining, it was mostly not about big pauses. It was mostly about uh, uh, diminishing a minute ventilation through relaxation. So what I really mean is that all the, all the movement has to happen more and more, that's what we need to learn, um, through more and more relaxation, not more and more speed, not more and more distance, not a less and less time, not more and more intensity, and not more and more number of repetitions, but on more and more relaxation. And that's what's healing people. Why I'm telling this? Because now I have experience from reversing the most aggressive, deadly brain tumors. Exactly this way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something happened with the sound. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, yeah. And that's why I'm saying not, uh, they, they, they have extensive levels of exercise. Mm -hmm. They work a lot. But I'm trying to teach them what I learned from my own faults. And I've been falling off the mountain bike in the, in the, in collapsing in the woods and waking up to my dog licking me in the face, trying to understand what's happened. Mm -hmm. I've been driven to the hospital from the tennis court three times. Mm -hmm and experiencing very, very fast drop of uh, pulse because I've been training with a pulse watch from 155 to 25 in one minute or something like that. It's like, or I don't know about the time, but it was like, um, and then I black out. And um, every time people I've been playing with or training with, they thought I was dead. It was like a shock for them. And yeah. now I didn't do that for years. So now um, several, three years, at least that was a long time ago, three years, three and a half years ago. Um, I am doing uh, high intensity training sometimes, never had heart, heart problems, mm -hmm. never. And I'm, I'm jogging, it's very normal for me to jog, uh, not a half a marathon, but quarter, a uh, third of a marathon. That's my distance from 12 to 15 kilometers twice a week, mm -hmm. barefoot, barefoot. <laughs> yeah. I'm not using shoes now for two years. I'm using only, uh, I'm using barefoot in the summer and sandals, very thin, zero sandals in the winter. Also down to minus 10 centigrade. So, so that's what, uh, what helped me basically. And I really want to promote this knowledge, not to overtrain and to, of moderation, which is basically was the hardest message from Professor Buteko, wasn't it? Yes, it's at, at the same time actually he, what he was talking about when talking about moderation, he was actually uh, would commonly mention that people sleep less, eat less, but we work more. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. And how do we call it? We call it, uh, uh, we call it energy coefficient. Yes, closer yes. to one, closer to one. That's what it is. We as engineers or physicians, uh, we, we know what energy coefficient is. When it gets closer to one, you don't need to sleep so much, you don't need to eat so much, but you can work more. And you don't need a lot of clothes, clothes because your thermoregulation is better. You see, I use the same set of clothes. You see, you see this one? Mm -hmm. That's the same clothes I used in the minus 10 outside. I don't have other clothes. That's a fleece. That's just normal fleece. I love this. It's called uh, uh, geographical Norway. And I love it because it's very tight. Um, that's what I train in. So that's the same pair of clothes. The only thing that I use during the hard winter, like not hard for me, it's Denmark, it's not Russia, minus 20, but sometimes we get minus 10. And um, when it's 
below zero, I use a very thin woolen uh, shirt under. Mm -hmm. And that's the only difference, basically. Excellent, yeah. Uh, did you get, Misha, your sleep down to four hours at certain points when you... It's always between four and five hours. I always get up. Now, right now, I, I get up every day half past four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Because, yeah. because I start working, you know, when I work with the brain tumors, I have two time, uh, two, two groups. Down under group with the Australia and New Zealand. And it starts 5.30 CET every day. 5.30 in the morning, I have my first group working with my first group in Australia and New Zealand. So I get up one hour before that, 4.30, about sometimes at four, every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's natural for me, it's uh, about four and a half hours sleep. Sometimes five, five, four and a half, five and five and a half. It's, it's a little bit different, but it's not more than that normally. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah. Not four, not four actually, because at four, I, I think uh, four, just these four, it doesn't really work for me because I feel that I have very good levels of energy where it's about four and a half to five hours. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I go to sleep around 11, 11.30 normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, kind of a, a question maybe from a totally different area, but <laughs> related to what we are talking about. Like uh, uh, Buteka method, you know, like uh, we recently had kind of discussion on the uh, Facebook forum for educators or practitioners of the Buteka method. And uh, like it's, it's kind of expected result that uh, some uh, educators or teachers of the method can view the Buteka method as something which is um, kind of uh, fixed or cannot be changed, you know, like whatever, let's say we learn, especially those people who learn from Buteka himself. Mm -hmm. And so at, at the same time, there would be people uh, who would apply different like kind of changes, modifications, additions, and still call it the Buteka method. Like for example, I myself, and I did not realize it kind of uh, long ago, because when I started, oh, I thought like, let's say like even measuring like uh, well first of all different using different tools in order to control various processes it uh, Buteka did not use as many as we do these days because it was many decades and like yeah, and, yeah. but w w what I mean here is there, there are people who like me may see the Buteka method as something which is growing and evolving and I also re realized completely the kind of like, like uh, with uh, use, users of devices like DIY device, Freelog device, when I started to apply, I don't know, more than 10 years ago already now, that uh, many Buteka practitioners would say that that's like totally un -Buteka. First of all, because Buteka himself was totally against telling that devices would uh, cause you to hyperventilate later. And we yeah. tested, we found the effect is opposite. Yeah. My question would be, do you yourself, would you view the Buteka method as something which is developing or it should be the one which is like kind of was... Uh, mm, I understand your question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, I think it, it has to be a blend uh -huh. because I, I really want people to understand in depth the, uh, um, what Professor Buteko, how he came to his understanding and to his legacy. I really want them to understand the legacy. Having said that, for example, using devices, I am using devices. I learned using devices from, you taught me how to make a do-it-yourself amazing breathing device, which I'm doing. I have a lot of, I mean, I'm doing, I'm teaching people doing this and always saying this is Dr. Rahimov's DIY uh, a device. And uh, we have it now in New Zealand, People are doing this different places. So, um, but I always start using devices one or two months after extensive Buteco training. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, don't use devices before, but there's exceptions. For example, you helped me once with a woman with- um, COPD. <laughs> uh, no, not COPD, no, it no. was a uh, metastatic brain. Uh, uh, metastatic um, breast cancer with um, um, with water in the lungs. Remember? Oh yeah. And okay. you said that yeah. basically I can I can start using it um, earlier in order to help her to drain the lungs. 
in these situations like that, I would say, uh, with the, the, the compromise, but it's a good compromise. Yeah, that's what I, I, I remember it was something respiratory. So for yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> no, no, no. This is very crucial to understand the difference. Uh, uh, I would always say you have to understand respir respiratory dynamics and mechanics first and the process of normalization. And then, and, and a concept of uh, um, diminished breathing through relaxation. That's the, the cornerstone. Diminished breathing through relaxation. People don't understand this. They are not ready to use extensive use of devices because they will only exacerbate. Well, they will risk to exacerbate their state, um, bad state. That's what I think. I don't know, but I think we need to learn Boutique first. So, because of the mechanics. Um, and some people that are ready, I would say, yes, go on with the flow, use the Frolov. But because I'm now teaching only groups, I will also always start with teaching Buteco first and using the devices afterwards. But then I will say, yes, Buteco method is like a tree, is growing. I would say we have to accumulate the experience. We have to accept differences and people People are involving in this method. It's, be it's becoming a part of their life. So why not should they also try to, like I made, you know, remember I introduced you to my way of doing steps, for example. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, that's a great way. Look, I'm doing this extensively. I'm still uh, calling it a Buteco method because it's inspired by Buteco. And I say, okay, this is my way of doing steps and it's working. I know it's working. And I know people get healthy from that. And it's a, it's a staple part of every training with, with me. It's my version of steps. Okay? Yes, yeah, you can imagine that. And we have different exercises. Mm -hmm. We have like five, six exercises about breathing. And then uh, all of them connected, most of, many of them connected with movement. We, we have some um, uh, sleep, uh, swimming exercises with breathing. Uh, where I ta uh, uh, um, teaching people how to breathe with nose only, immersing uh, head in the water and take a, um, a draw air only every three, um, how do you call it? Or three strokes. Three strokes, yeah. Every, every second or every third stroke, mm -hmm. for example all the nose breathing. So there's a lot of aspects in that. So absolutely, it's a living method. And I think it has to be respect for, to a legacy of Buteco, absolutely. And also a room for understanding how to, where to bring. Because it, it's not a dead method. It's a living method, it's like a tree. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yes, yeah. I, I kind of also kind of have more uh, opinions that uh, if people use kind of it's the two difficulties actually, which I believe uh, appear if we uh, if somebody would say that well it's like what this is what Doctor Buteka trained me to do, and so I'm going to use only these techniques uh, no matter what. So it's that's, okay. that's no that's possible as well. There's just the difficulty what I realized later are following that first of all like uh, uh, looking at the history. I could definitely find many quite serious differences in terms of how Buteyka taught like in 60s, 70s and uh, in 80s was kind of some transition and 90s were actually quite different and there is actually was also a big kind of, uh, um, uh, I would say maybe like ne negative element or uh, how we can say maybe washing out of maybe some standards because Buteyka actually was quite tough in 60s and 70s with all, all doctors that he trained. And later these uh, standards like started to deteriorate worse and worse and uh, eventually we get like situations when like practitioners could like uh, get trained even often by Buteyka without even like actually progressing much in terms of their own breath, like without experiencing the mm. technique on themselves. Yeah. Which is kind of for me a really kind of a big, big concern because Probably they can still help some people, and it looks like they do, but uh, like the ways, like the, 
it's it's a huge topic yeah it's definitely a big topic kind of to, to bring here like kind of we are discussing probably more kind of cancer yeah. and your experience this this is quite a different one uh, to go into now uh, but i plan to actually to discuss to have i have like kind of some made some posts on my blog and so on in, mm. in this area because uh, there definitely uh, people would benefit more from people from teachers or educators absolutely for me when i'm I'm going to certify people. Um, I will say nobody will be certified unless they reach 60. Okay, that's, that's very strong. <laughs> no, 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 because because uh, I want them to work seriously with very serious diseases. Mm -hmm. I do not want anybody that can. Uh, uh, I'm not certifying people with the CP uh, lower than 60. Mm -hmm. Well, it's there's a lot of things. You know, it's a it's a 12 month process with uh, certification, 12 months, and they have to learn different things. And I have to see that how they training. So I, I actually want to have a very, very high standard of boutique. Yeah, that's, Misha, that's quite a bit surprising for me because I thought well, like uh, from what I knew from uh, other schools, because uh, of course we know there are so many schools, boutique schools like developed in different parts of the world and we trained uh, many, a lot of practitioners, many of them. Uh, I thought always like kind of what I <laughs> require from people what I train. I have it actually on my side, but, but I have two levels of training. I have like one for CP60 and one I have at least minimum CP30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And now I see that you actually have, but I completely understand because you're talking about again, uh, much harder type of conditions. Yeah. Training. yeah teaching people how to get rid of medication, uh, let's say for, uh, uh, for, for asthma is one thing and dealing like, uh, but yeah. even also actually re reversing the same asthma completely like so that- Absolutely, and, and diabetes. Different. Uh, and diabetes. Uh, a lot of yeah. conditions would be- yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, okay, so yeah. So I'm voting for a high level of uh, boutique practitioners, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, it m might be also, like I thought myself, it's kind of a really complex situation that it might be so that uh, practitioners can be kind of, uh, uh, maybe kind of, uh, well, I, 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 there is kind of still, still formally no, and would, would never be any uh, body which would unite all practitioners, but to have kind of understanding that there are different conditions and also like uh, ideally, of course, practitioners, uh, yeah, I, I, at the same time, I also would completely believe that the practitioners with uh, really uh, high experience in the method, like uh, meaning that we get to, to the normal health that Boteka suggested, would still bring uh, much more to students because uh, my uh, strong impression be uh, is that like I work with many people who came to me after working with other practitioners, uh, uh, other educators. Every year I get like several such people with various like kind of sometimes strange uh, stories we say about that I already have cleansing reaction like for six months, you know, like uh, something like we, uh, a very, very common story. Uh, and uh, we, we, of course, would, could not have it one. So we just overtrained or there is some other abnormality which is going on for a long time. Like we had screw up digestion. We already have something like maybe close to IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. And that takes really, but what I found very difficult with uh, such students is that we have kind of, uh, once we get this perception of the method, that the method is something like we get, I don't know, like kind of some mild improvements and we kind of do not even see that there is much more hidden in the technique because <laughs> it's actually not just much more, it's like, it's like several other walls are hidden because if, if we uh, like uh, look at Russian literature and I myself had short experiences actually getting even like to the zone <laughs> with two hours of sleep, like for some days, like was it was like, uh, very, very kind of, uh, yeah, well, like, I can't say even impressive, but it's like a totally unusual experience because you can kind of live in a different universe, you know, like you see the world with, and you see yourself to totally different, like if you get there, it's like extreme. It's in a way like, uh, because what I mean here is people actually, millions of people spending literally years and years you know, trying to activate pineal gland, you know, to get into gamma brain waves and uh, theta brain waves. And they managed to get it during meditation, for example, only. And here with Buteka, you can get up there and can get it like 24 per seven, you know, like kind of as a side effect of, of uh, breath retraining. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, I understand.
But yeah, thank you very much. If you just want to add anything, it's uh, yeah, it was well. I think it was a thank you, Arthur. You always have very good, very interesting um, aspects of uh, breathing and uh, all the things around it. Uh, <laughs> it's inspiring, always inspiring talking to you. Yeah. It's great, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Misha. Thank you then. <laughs> thank you, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah.